Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. According to Politico, Rob Schneider was cut off 10 minutes into a half hour set at a Republican networking holiday event. This happened last year. I don't know why we're just finding out about it now, but apparently Rob Schneider's material was too offensive. Other descriptions, raunchy, racist, gross, and vulgar. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith walked out of the performance. Her spokesperson said she didn't have to listen to it, so she got up and left. Uh, Apparently, some of the other jokes were aimed at Asian people, unquote, including one about, quote, Korean whorehouses. All 150 attendees, which included more than 40 Senate chiefs of staff, were told, received an apology from organizers the next day, which read, (laughs) this is great, While we do our best to ensure every aspect of our program is professional, courteous, and appropriate, we sincerely regret that the entertainment at last night's program fell short of that goal. What did they think Schneider was going to do? The Senate Working Group, the organization that held the event, claimed that Schneider broke a verbal agreement to keep his set relatively clean. Meanwhile, Gerard Carmichael, who I'm just not interested in, is ready to set the record straight about his joke recently. He was on The Breakfast Club. He told Charlemagne the God, you played a clip of my stand-up, but it started at the punchline, and it, like, completely erased the setup of it. I really don't like that. It made it seem like I'm in some type of race, sexual, slavery roleplay with my boyfriend, which is untrue. It's so false, and I expect that type of thing from TMZ, because they have no humanity. They don't care about the people that get hurt when they report these sorts of things, but you're a friend. Charlemagne said when he played the clip was the only part of the episode he had seen... Carmichael said, yeah, but I need you to watch the show. And anybody watches the show knows it's not what I said. It's so false. It's so untrue. I don't like that because it's like it has nothing to do with my boyfriend. It has nothing to do with the sex that we have. It has nothing to do with sex. It's something that people have been reporting on. I really, really don't like it. Carmichael explained in context, the joke is about my boyfriend reading so much that he makes me feel insecure about my level of reading. I sometimes joke to him that our relationship is like that of a slave and a master's son who, like, teaches me how to read by candlelight. The gist of the joke is that Carmichael buys a lot of books but never actually reads them. From Late Nighter, great website you should check out, SNL almost brought back Kenan Thompson's O.J. Simpson this weekend. You may have heard that O.J. Simpson passed away. Late Nighter says the sketch got as far as dress rehearsal, but they decided not to include it in Weekend Update. According to people who were at the dress rehearsal... Thompson has O.J. dressed as an angel, complete with a halo above his head, telling Colin Jost about his new life in heaven. As the bit progressed, it became clear that O.J. is in hell, but doesn't realize it. He describes seeing great food everywhere, but it turning to dust whenever he tries to eat it. He says he went back to the physical shape he was as a pro football player, but whenever he tries to score, he's off by a yard and has to return to the other end of the field. Colin Jost then suggested O.J.'s actually in hell. Keenan as O.J. protested. Asking if he's in hell, why are his lawyers here too? Another joke saw Simpson removing his black leather glove, only for it to reappear on his hand. Seems like Colette Fountain, who writes for the Daily Beast, does not enjoy Jimmy Carr the way I do. The headline on the Daily Beast, byline by Colette Fountain, Jimmy Carr really needs you to know how quote-unquote edgy he is. In his latest Netflix special, the British comic goes out of his way to warn viewers that he might get cancelled. It's exhausting. I don't think you understand Jimmy's act. He's been doing that since before cancel became a term associated with comedy. He has always done that. That is what the act is. He has always done the, hey, you can't say this thing, and then he pushes it and pushes it to illustrate it. That's what the act is. If you don't like the act, that's fine. But that would be like somebody doing 20 minutes complaining that Adam Sandler movies are stupid. That person doesn't understand what an Adam Sandler... Oh, wait. (laughs) <laughs> I like Jimmy Carr a lot. I haven't seen the special yet. Clyde Fountain writes, If you missed the trailers or his Instagram post in which he preemptively apologizes to insert a grieve party name here, don't worry, because Carr drives the point home the second the special begins, opening with, People say you can't joke about anything these days. Watch me now. The comic goes on to use a litany of buzzwords associated with anti-wokeness, jokes that might get me canceled, and a segment of deliberately controversial jokes ensure that Carr's agenda is not lost in translation. Again, that's what a Jimmy Carr special is. If telling himself that his critics are part of the zombified, wokerati mob helps Carr maintain his ignorance to the consequence of his comedy, then so be it. We all need to find a way to sleep at night. Whatever. Kevin Hart announced a tour. It is called Acting My Age. I believe he had been uh, sort of touring under In Progress or Work in Progress or Next Act in Progress. Anyway, it's got a name now, Acting My Age. 
And notice we're starting on Long Island. He'll also play Seattle, Portland, Houston, Oakland, Boston, Philly, some other places, including the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival in Edmonton, July 12th through the 14th. I thought this one was interesting. This also from Late Nighter. They noticed that the Conan O'Brien profile in The Hollywood Reporter mentions that Team Coco Slate includes a show starring Cheers co-stars Ted Danson and Woody Harrelson. Uh, Here, let me read it to you and then I'll comment. The show's description teases the podcast is a chance to reconnect both with each other and the amazing friends that they've each met over the decades. That is when Ted can get a hold of Woody. It's not a straight Cheers rewatch. Danson has suggested that Cheers will be a topic of conversation. And he says of Woody, we don't really know each other after 30 years of not being together every day. So we're catching up with each other. The truth is we're having a ball. So in a previous life, this podcast was pitched to me and the other people in the room. We all looked at each other. And to us, I think this was during the pandemic. It just sounded like an agent fishing for money. And our vibe was neither Ted nor Woody actually wanted to do a podcast. They just wanted to get paid to do a podcast. Uh, that version of the pitch also was not a Cheers rewatch. Uh, we didn't develop it. Good luck, Sirius XM. Roots of Comedy with Jesus Trejo is a new comedy documentary series hailing from PBS SoCal. This will stream on the PBS app May 24th. The series follows Mexican-American comedian and host Jesus Trejo as he embarks on a journey to tell the stories behind the laughs. He visits six U.S. regions, including L.A., Denver, and Portland, where he meets six rising comedians. That sounds like it could be pretty cool, right? Uh, If you don't want to stream it on May 24th, it will air on PBS stations on June 21st at 10 Eastern, if you want to add that to your calendar. BET has added to the 2024 BET Experience. It's a late-night comedy series that will debut at this year's event at the Miracle Theater in L.A., hosted each night by Chris Spencer and Friends... Described as a unique blend of comedic brilliance and cultural relevance from today's hottest comedians, June 26th through the 28th, Tiffany Haddish and Michael Blackson will headline on Thursday and Friday, the Wednesday night headliner, TBD. Lily Tomlin's This Is a Recording became the 13th comedy album and the first by a woman to be inducted into the National Recording Registry. The other albums are Tom Lehrer's Songs by Tom Lehrer from 1953, Mort Saul's At Sunset from 1958, Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, 2,000 Years with Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks from 1960, Bob Newhart's The Button-Down Mind of Bob Newhart, 1960, Stan Freeberg Presents the United States of America, 1961, Vaughn Mader's The First Family, 1962, Bill Cosby, I Started Out as a Child, 1964, Firesign Theaters, Don't Crush That Dwarf, Hand Me the Pliers, 1970, boy, these are all ancient records. George Carlin's Class Clown, 1972, sounds modern, but that's 50 years ago now. Groucho Marx and Evening with Groucho from 1972. What's that? This was a double album by the witty TV and film comedian. That's all I can tell you about it. Don't have any more details on that. I guess I could look that up. Let's look that up. Let's see. A one-man show by Groucho, edited from three separate performances at New York's Carnegie Hall, uh, someplace in Iowa and somewhere in San Francisco. Still not much detail on it. Moving on, Richard Pryor's Wanted from 1978, and Steve Martin's A Wild and Crazy Guy from 1978. Uh, I don't know, do things have to be 40 years old to get on this list? I don't know. So I am off my game today. I am stumbling left and right, and I've had to make a million edits because I flew red-eye from Los Angeles. Can I just uh, ask everyone, please, please, stop flying red-eyes with babies. I feel like 100% of the red-eyes I take, somebody brings a baby. The baby's going to scream the whole flight. Now, the whole point of a red eye is we're trying to sleep. Everyone knows what a red eye is except these people with the babies. What are you doing? So, rough night. I'm half asleep. Uh, Let's see. In L.A., the National Donuts chain had cinnamon vanilla iced coffee. That was pretty good. And I was at the uh, green coffee place that Kenny, who's one of the supporters of the show, always encourages me to visit. And I was at a particular location that I associate my mind with Kenny. Kenny, hope you're doing well out there. If you enjoy the show, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. You can't buy Glenn a beer because we're not doing trivia. It's volleyball season. That's right. Tonight is the season opener of beach volleyball. Oh, I forgot I had added this to today's calendar. Okay, we have to do an intervention. This intervention is for Jim Gaffigan. This clip I'm going to play from Jim Gaffigan hawking his new bourbon is really, really terrible. I suggest, even though this is my podcast, I suggest you hit 30-second skip because this is really, really bad. Are you prepared? We, we need to 
get to Jim and tell him to cut this out because this is not working. Jim Gaffigan here. Let's listen. There are these trends in the bourbon industry like, oh, our bourbon was on a ship at sea. You're not going to get a toy. Sorry. We don't do that here at Father Time. But I do give each barrel a pep talk. And since I am a qualified life coach, it's pretty important. And I think you can taste it. No, you're doing great. You are doing great. You are not, you are not swelling. What happens often is there's a moment of story time. Once upon a time, there was a barrel named Benny. And well, Benny, he was a, a 15 year old, 75, 23, 18, 10 mash bill. Yes, he was a four grain. And well, he had always dreamed of after he was turned into Father Time Bourbon that he would go over Niagara Falls. It's a true story. Jim, bro, stop. It's not working at all. Just come on and go, hey, it's Jim Gaffigan. I have a new bourbon. I hope you like it. Stop with whatever you're doing. It is not working. Let's take a look at the festivals. If you're in Dubai, you can go see Amer Zar today. Amer Zar is a comedic journey through being Palestinian and Arab in today's times. That's probably a very, very interesting show. Moon Tower tonight. Uh, I like this title. Cheers, queers. <laughs> That's at the Creek in the Cave at 6. The State at 7 o'clock. Tim Robinson at 7. Stars in bars. Uh, some of these stars include Joel Nicole Johnson. Uh, let's see. Andy Kindler. Sam J. James Adomian. Ian Carmel. Shane Torres. That's a nice little show. Uh, Need to Know at 7 o'clock, Eastmo at 7, and The Texans at 7.30. Cam Patterson at 7.30. Comedy Confidential at 7.30. Sam J at 8. Drew Lynch at 8. Sarah Schaefer at 8.30. She's fantastic. Mary Radzinski at 8.30. New York's Finest, 9 o'clock. The International's 9 o'clock. Ken Flores, 9.30. Boy, Moon Tower's busy night, huh? Rough Cut at 9.30. Stamp Town at 9.30. Surrounded at 9.30. Best of the Fest at 10. Unzip, 10.30. Avery Pearson at 11 and the after party at 11. Okay, let's do Cheers Queers at 6. That'll take us to about 7.30. Let's do, let's grab a beer and then let's do Sour Schaefer at 8.30. That'll take us to 10 or so, so we can probably catch a late show. Let's do the 88 show with Avery Pearson also on that show. Uh, Carmen Christopher, Jeremiah Watkins, Andy Haynes, Cypher Sounds, Jenny Zagrino. 11 o'clock at Antones. Okay, and at Melbourne. No, I didn't preload the site. What are you, crazy? I'm not pulling clips because I can barely speak today. I need a nap. Let's see. Here's a show called Two Minutes to Kill. Features 15 comedians giving you two minutes of their funniest jokes. Three hosts choose their favorite acts, and you, the audience, gets to choose who closes out the show with more jokes. That's a good time. All right, let's do that one. Two Minutes to Kill. Let's find one more, and then I'm going to take a nap. Here's one called Comedy Out West. A night filled with comedy not quite raw, more medium to well done as local and imported comedians assemble in the West to ballot out for the all-important audience vote. All right, it's a voting night. Let's do those two shows. May Plannert is recording her new special at the Grove 34 in Astoria. Mark Normand is producing it. Carol Burnett will get another Lifetime Achievement Award, this one from the Gracie Awards in Beverly Hills on May 21st. And I'll leave you with this. An Australian comedian has barred anyone over the age of 85 from his stand-up shows after getting into some words with an elderly crowd member. Blake Pavey shared a video from a recent show. His opener got into it with a man in the audience who was heckling him with barbs like, I wish you had some talent and say something funny, mate. The opener shot back and said, Is property not enough for you? They have to come and ruin my night? Pavey then took the stage for his set and got into it with the older gentleman and said, How does the oldest C word here have the lowest IQ? He yelled out, I'm still waiting to laugh. Pavey said, Ah, an American being an entitled C word. What a shocker. The man got up from his seat and went to leave. Pavey clocked it and joked, Sorry, I'm trying to listen, but we have a dementia patient in the room. The man yelled back, I'm still waiting to laugh. The man then said, I wish you were funny, mate. Pavey said, I wish you weren't a C word, but we can't all have what we want. <laughs> Uh, okay there was probably a better version of me telling that story if i'm awake but i am not stop taking babies on red eyes see you tomorrow